So you know what they say when a Santa Claus comes to town? It is officially the start of the Santa Claus rally for the markets as the markets have basically been on a creaming, screaming journey this week with just basically higher highs, higher highs, higher all-time highs. It cannot stop, won't stop. And it's all due to the election and Donald Trump getting reelected. Now, this puts into an interesting question. Are they going to crash the markets because now he's in office? Are we going to start publishing the real data as things are coming out? Or is this just going to be the start of the 2016 rally, right? We saw a lot of this rhetoric when he got back in in 2016 that the markets were going to crash, that everything. And let me remind you, during that time on a monthly basis, right, it is insane, right? It was absolutely insane. We saw 2016 kind of this like, Early 2015, early 2016 going down, 2016 inauguration hit, and it was just a booming time. Now, COVID rolled around afterwards, but again, it was very, very interesting to see what's going on with the markets. So looking at all this, we can clearly see that the markets are pushing extremely, extremely hot. We also have various different things going on, uh, starting off with Powell basically saying he won't resign. And that press conference was just an absolute cream fest of various different things that were going on. So if you guys want to check that one out, we covered it live. Link in the description below if you want to check it out. But however, stay tuned for the levels that we're going to discuss in this video to know where you should be bullish or bearish. As we saw, we would have immediately known on election night to be bullish with a massive gap that occurred. So congratulations to all those that profited from those levels. We give those levels out every single single week. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel with bell notifications on. But again, not ranting about that. We can see Powell says he won't resign. I really don't care about that. I just care about the fear and greed index cranking up to 61. We were sitting right at neutral territory. Now, the one thing that I'm going to talk about some concerns I have and my advice to you guys of where you should necessarily be positioning. I'm net position long right now, but not with full fledged into the markets. I'm about 50% into the market just because I'm looking to take advantage of the Santa Claus rally, but I'm also managing my account on a daily basis versus those that don't, right? I'm, I have certain things that I basically am looking for in the market to basically stay into the market. Unless these things occur, then I'm going to get out of the market. So I will share with you all those in this video as we go over the levels, some of the things I'm seeing. And secondly, we can see the economic calendar. We got CPI on Wednesday. Now, this is quite interesting with the expectations, 2.4 flat CPI. So that means that shelter energy is kind of just going to stay in this limbo state. It's not necessarily going to be this um, overarching number, right? They're not going to keep increasing it based on the expectations. Core 3.3 may come down to 3.2, 3.1. They haven't actually published expectations for this. However, the thing is, it's a theory I've had about the Fed wanting to publish bad numbers because Trump's in, but it also makes them look bad and make Jerome Powell's legacy look bad. So it's kind of like I'm debating between these two things. Throw in the comment section what you think. Do you think they're going to actually publish bad numbers to make Trump look bad? They're going to wait till the start of the year so that his economic policies can take effect and the Fed can blame inflation going up because, you know, naturally they've created inflation through the money printer? Or is things just going to calmly smoothly that bump in the road and it's time to look forward into the forward direction which is the curiosity of like how warren buffett is selling a lot of things right as we can see with the expectations for rate cuts they're not looking as bullish as they were but then again it's 64 percent that's a pretty decent odds with 35 percent i think once you get this inflation report this wednesday we're going to be seeing what exactly is going on in the markets what the expectations are that the fed is going to be green lit to cut and also december is when we get our sep so we're gonna have to wait almost a month and a half before we get the expectations on the december 18 date so actually a month and seven days to be exact. The other thing we have to keep an eye on, right, is the reverse repo with the extreme amount of liquidity coming out of the bond market, especially as yields were pushing up higher. Now, they've calmed down for a bit, and we can jump over that in just a second over here. We can clearly see the yields kind of stagnating back where we were in June, July, where it was uncertain of the Fed's rate cuts, right? So the Fed said, hey, we're going to cut rates. They cut rates immediately now, and yields are pushing back up. And that means that they don't believe inflation is going to completely conquer, but that also doesn't mean the flip side that people aren't going to be bullish on the market, especially with if there's reform coming as their sentiment or it's they project the future value into the current. So if they're expecting rosier picture in the future 
especially with company earnings and various things, and especially with the big tech giants still promoting decent earnings. The question is, is it time to continue to be bullish? Is it time to be more aggressive, right? Where, where do we find ourselves? And now let's dive into the strategy that we're gonna employ for the remainder of this year and going into next year. So let's dive into the levels on the S&P first and talk about exactly what happened. So let's just recap real quick what happened on the S&P. As we saw, we rotated above the rotationary point, went for the gap fill and just completely bonkered it out of nowhere. We actually rotated back down off the all time high. So that was pretty bullish, right? There was all bullish signs, there was no bearishness. Everyone's gonna be saying, oh look, it's a topping pattern. The arrow's pointing straight up just because we pushed nearly 5% in one single week doesn't mean that we could not get another one of these this week. And that is why I'm looking bullish. That's why I added Meta, Microsoft, Apple to my portfolio doing spreads and stocks just to take advantage of this end of year rally and also above the 90 moving average. Some of these stocks are also lagging behind, similarly like Apple and uh, Microsoft were lagging behind because subsequently they were chopping around. So I'm take, trying to take advantage of people saying, hey, what's on discount? What can I buy? What can I sell, right? All these things coming into play. So let's clean up the chart real quick and talk about the levels for this week because it's gonna be a banger week. So looking at the S&P, we can clearly see that we got a very large range for the week. The range for the week is approximately 5%. The same way we went up, the same way we can go down, especially with CPI as a catalyst this week there is a danger of 585 being retraced and retracing all the way down to 576. That would be if CPI came in as a catastrophe and the market reacted appropriately to it. Do I think based on the historical reactions of the market that unless we get like a crazy CPI print, do I think we're gonna do that? No, simply there's not enough catalysts out in the market. Um, Iran, especially with Israel, are calming down, especially with new leadership heading into the White House. So the expectation is the world's gonna be a little more calm, collective. Powell really didn't bomb the market. So there's not a lot of threats left on the table. We did talk about the inversion of the yield curve, right? Where we basically said, hey, this is looking like it's gonna invert again. And we see right here that the inversion of the yield curve looks like it wants to do loop-de-loops, as my partner would say, but it hasn't necessarily done that. We have to keep an eye on it, but we don't need to necessarily play our whole trading strategy against it. We need to be cautious for this thing to start degrading, for some news catalysts to come out. So this could front run it. This could be our early warning sign, but I will keep you guys updated of that. Simply put right now, I'm looking at the bullish reaction that I did not expect. So this was countervailing to my expectations. So I'm playing the I'm wrong. I need to flip my strategy and go bullish, right? I was saying that now that Trump will get in, that they wouldn't have this reaction. I didn't expect this reaction. So I need to basically buck up to the bar, say I was wrong, and look how I can profit off of this. Simply put, looking at things that are lagging behind, looking to buying things that are lagging behind. Apple and Microsoft were a perfect example of two, two of the bigger tech giants that weren't as pushing as strong as let's say Tesla, Netflix, Amazon, they were on a tear. So now is money gonna rotate out of those stocks and these stocks and is the S&P a excellent buying opportunity? So again, max out your Roth, obviously, because that is just free money sitting there. Max out your 401k match at the company and then look to put money aside, right? Put money into some of the lagging sectors, look into dividend companies. There's various different things that you can do, right? It is, I'm changing my tune a little bit on the market just because I'm seeing this reaction. I'm seeing what the market is pricing. I'm seeing how the Fed is reacting, right? Everything is just aligning to the central direction that there is a boom time risk on mentality as we can look to Bitcoin, which we'll just get into a second after the NASDAQ. And speaking of the NASDAQ, let's quickly jump over to it after going after these levels. Again, 559.64 is gonna be the level we need to watch for the S&P. And then subsequently, these rotationary points of gap fill at 593 and 585. Do I think 585 is gonna come into play? No. What I'd be doing is if we start breaking this, I'd be looking to sell calls on assets just to cover any downside potential and then subsequently implied volatility contraction. And then here for 585, if that breaks, then we look to bearish positions to take advantage of the short-term bearishness, which is a gap fill to the 50-day moving average, but that would be a pretty massive gap fill. I will keep you updated in the video of what happens, but let's first break 593 before we start throwing our bear hats on, right? Saying the world's gonna end. And then 599.64, let's see where things are gonna be going. So let's jump over to the NASDAQ and we can see what we got on deck there. 
So with the NASDAQ, it's actually even a scarier graph, right? The NASDAQ, the S&P was 5%, the NASDAQ's over 6% range for the week. So once you had this big, massive range, we do expect a contraction in the range. I don't expect massive moves in the market, which are great for theta decay, right? P selling options and all these things. That's why I'm taking advantage of that. But subsequently, I could be completely wrong. I would, like I was wrong about last week, where the market could decide to do another Santa Claus rally in November, December. It is the most bullish time of the year. This is where people are basically piling into the market, taking advantage of like tax benefits and all this, and trying to deduct some of their income from various things. So again, 514.92 is gonna be the upper region for the NASDAQ. Again, 483.75, like last week, is gonna be the bottoming area but we have to break a lot of structure to get down there. Again, I don't believe there's a catalyst unless something magically drops out of the sky, like a bank failure or something of that nature, that we get that downward potential. First, 508.34 would be a rotationary buy point. Set a first gap fill. We could fill this middle gap to 506, right? Slight downside potential earlier in the week, then head banger into CPI. I don't think CPI is gonna be as big of a, as a gap and go, just because subsequently we are going to leave a lot of gaps in chart, which is not unheard of, right? We've left crazy gaps before and never filled these. So subsequently, because the, this bottom gap hasn't been filled this week, I don't think we're gonna get that. The lowest we're gonna get is 500 on the NASDAQ, also because there was a large accumulation phase right here. So now we're going through an expansionary phase. Well, what would I be doing? I'd be slowly buying any dips that occur in the market, 508.34, uh, 499.60, right? That, that's where I'd be looking to buy the market and subsequently just look at the buy side but cautious against some of the things that are going on in the market. And simply to know if you need to be cautious against the market, I'm gonna give you guys a simple thing. So I use Lex Algo. If I don't see on the smart money flow any degradation signs, which is monthly, I'm looking for this white dot to appear on the monthly. That is where I'm gonna basically say, okay, it's time to get out. Now, what's cause for concern is this exit signal with this buy signal back in beginning of September of 23, which is where we had this 30% rally in the NASDAQ, which these crazy returns traditionally don't happen year over year, but then again, it could be various different things. One of the things I don't like is volume decreasing coming out of the pandemic. So we're seeing less and less people buying in, but we've also seen this in 2016. So again, we have to be cautious about various different things. We saw briefly in May as there was turbulence with different banks and stuff and credit ratings that we saw degradation the same way with the S&P, right? If we look at the S&P on this, we see that we're stretching, but one of the things is the trend, right? The trend area right here is not really touching that green line. So we do have potential to run in the markets. I'm seeing both sides of the argument because traditionally when we get these big downturns, we're trending in that bullish area. And then also then we get the signal, right? So we've been trending extremely long for that bullish area. And subsequently after that, we had basically 181% rally. So again, seeing that same thing, and that's when we start touching to, so another 186% rally, that'll be a mind blowing for years in the market. So there's evidence that between now and Q2, I'm basically going to be fully into the market. I'm looking to see if anything breaks. Why Q2? So going back to the yield curve is where I get this thesis from. Basically 12 months from August would be August of next year. I think something would already have to have signs of breaking before we just like, we don't break like this, right? We don't just break instantly uh, down to the market and the yield curve would subsequently have to start trending down into March. So that's where I'm gonna be looking. Okay, let's see how November, December, January, February, the Fed's gonna get a five months of inflation data. If there's no degradation there, then we're gonna have five job reports, right? So we can assess this on a monthly to monthly basis of knowing what's going on. And that's why someone that's younger like me, I can take more of a risk of people that are older or closer to retirement, I would argue that maybe only 50% into the market with 50% cash reserves, because even if you get a 25% haircut on that 50, that still remains like 75% of your portfolio is intact from initial um, investment, right? And that 25% is only gonna count like a, t a slight drawdown where you can dollar cost average and regain that relatively cooking in a year or two. Again, unless we have a lost decade. So there, there's things we have to look out for. I think with the style of Trump economics that we're gonna get, I don't see necessarily that downside potential super happening. The reason I spent the last two years talking about how the market is 
in a very bad place is because the debt ceiling, the debt negotiations and all this, we have to keep an eye on some of these bad things that can happen. Again, reverse repo, the Fed, the non-soft landing, the loss of jobs recently, right? There, there's still things that we have to be cautious in the economy, but the stock market isn't necessarily reacting to it. Now that could be a bubble, that could just be how things are going forward. So we have to keep one foot in the door of caution, one foot in the door of exploration until these things resolve themselves. And simply we can do that by looking at the levels knowing if we break above 514 put more money into the market right that's bullish bullish and bullish as every subsequent weekly high or high we go more bullish into the market we can see on the russell right russell having an absolute banger week and actually let's just jump over to the iwm which again this is where things get interesting right IDM has a massive gap and also subsequently is trying to tackle new all-time highs. We still got that 40% rally that Tom Lee said. If he's right, that would mean the NASDAQ would have to rally close to 100%. So again, is it going to be 1985? Is it going to be 2000? Is it going to be 2007, right? There's, there's things showing on both sides of the market. And I'll keep you guys updated of what's going on. But things like Bitcoin, as long as Bitcoin is bullish in this area, right? We can clearly see Bitcoin's price target, which we broke in this wedge finally. So we can see the price target for Bitcoin comes right to 88,000, right? On futures. So you got about another 10K to run on Bitcoin before you hit price target. That would be very bullish. I'm going to say 85, 90 is where people should be getting out necessarily if you're trying to take profits on Bitcoin. And then subsequently, 100 is going to be that psychological number. But Bitcoin has been running like no tomorrow. If you actually say this is a bull flag, right? So we can clearly see from that that puts you smack dab right at 100. Bitcoin's price target is gonna be 100. It's the psychological number that we've been playing at. It's gonna have some chop, but if you're looking at Bitcoin, until you get to 100, which subsequently could be around Q1, Q2 of next year, that's where you have to play bullish. Again, buy that 25, 50% structure of the portfolio that I'm recommending and why I'm playing it and looking for these signs. I have a checklist and you guys can know what that checklist is in the Discord server, link description below if you guys wanna join or following us on X, we're gonna be giving that out for free so you guys know exactly what to look for in the markets and can pick our brain and evolve this checklist as we grow as a community. So if you guys wanna know when those real-time trades are occurring, I post everything in the Discord along with my buddy. So we throw everything there. So make sure you guys are joined there. It's completely free, but soon to be behind a paywall. So we're going to be talking about more of that in the coming months. So to wrap it all up, we have to be cautious in the market, but we don't necessarily have to leave money on the table. We'll keep you guys updated of everything that's going on as things evolve. And Fatal's going to give you the biggest wins and losers now, and then we'll be back for the last little bit and see you guys in just a second so now that the election is over and donald trump has won one of the most friendliest presidents for business we can see that this is translating to uh yeah five percent up on the five day when it comes to the sp 500 and on the one day it was up 0.38 percent took a breather here on friday Looking at the next upcoming earnings for the week, we can see that there's still a lot of earnings. On Monday, we got companies like Zeta or Zeta, I don't know how to say that, Aramark, Luminar, Monday, uh, Live Nation, and a lot more. Then on Tuesday, we got Shopify. That was going to be a, a big one. Home Depot, though, is going to be the biggest one on Tuesday, as well as Occidental Petroleum as well. And then on Wednesday, we got HUD 8 Mining, Cisco, uh, CyberArk, and um, a couple other companies here that I'm not really too sure of. Get Bitcoin Depot, I guess, maybe. I mean, Bitcoin has been soaring ever since Trump won. Thursday, we got Disney, Applied Materials, Talon Energy, JD. Not, not JD Vance, but the company JD. And a lot more. And on Friday, we got Alibaba. Okay, so we got two big Chinese companies here. It'll be interesting to see how they react based off of the Trump win. Now, when taking a look at this week's performance when it comes to the S&P 500, is that for surprising? This is all in the green. Wow, guys, this is all in the green. Again, you know, I'm still sticking with the fact that I believe that things will fall when Trump does get into office because I think they'll start revealing all the numbers. But so far, this is looking really good for business right now. Wow. In the technology sector, we can see that the worst performer, it is none other than the company 
Akamai Technology is losing 11.14%. And the best performer in the whole entire sector is in the same, it's the same industry. It is Palantir, 39.29% on the week. Absolutely massive. Out of all the companies that were hyped up during the 2020 and 2021 uh, cycle, Palantir was one of the best ones, at least was one of the ones with the best fundamentals and definitely translates to this. Palantir, I, I'm going to say right here, Palantir is, was and is the Amazon of the massive hype from 2020 and 2021. So, as we're invested in that one, congratulations, you guys are making bank right now. Looking into the, okay, so they changed this up on me. Uh, looking into now the consumer cyclicals, they really changed this up on me. Wow, okay. Worst performer here was the company Wine Win Resorts, losing 11.89%. And the best performer, uh, wow. Um, it's pretty easy to tell, right? It's pretty easy to tell. It is, of course, Tesla gaining 29.01%. Absolutely massive. Looking now into the consumer defensives. Worst performer here. It is none other than the company. Seems to be, guys, the company uh, Dollar Tree. Losing 7.79%. And the best performer is the company. Uh, I was thinking it was going to be Kroger. But no, it is it's also not Costco either. Okay, it seems to be this company over here. Mo oh, Molson Coors Beverage Tap gaining 8.29%. But also take a look at Costco. Costco's up. Do you see that? You guys see that line on Costco? What? It's just straight up. Almost a thousand dollars. We're probably going to see a stock split once this thing hits a thousand dollars, most likely. Looking now into the banks, we can see that this is just the of green once again. There's only Three companies in the whole thing that lost. We got the companies that lost. Well, the first one being, actually, I guess the one that lost the least was AIG losing 0.18%. Then Market Access Holdings losing 4.43%. And the worst one was CBOE, I don't know how to say this, CBOE Global Markets losing 6.29%. And the best performance, it's going to take me a little bit to find it, guys. Just give me one second while I find the company that performed the best over here um yeah seems to be seems to be the company goldman sachs gaining an astounding 13.46 but i mean you got morgan stanley 10.85 these things are insane right now look at look at this capital one 13 actually no sorry the best performer was not that oh my goodness the best performer was actually discover financials 15.76 synchrony financial 15.4 okay this is just insane these these companies are just bonkers right now when it comes to when it comes to performance. It's just absolutely crazy. Oh my goodness. All right, moving on. We can see into now the communication sector. Again, they did change this up a bit. Worst performer was Verizon losing 2.13%. And that was it. Everything else gained a significant, significant amount. We can see that the best performer overall, it is the company Warner Bros. Discovery gaining 11.54%. Into now the healthcare sector. It's actually the most 50-50 that we see so far. Worst performer, it is Moderna losing 14.28%. Wow. And the best performer seems to be... Wow. I was thinking it was going to be this one. But apparently, guys, it is none other than the company... It seems to be... Uh, let's see. It seems to be this one right over here, guys. Charles River Laboratories getting 19.03%. Into now the... This is messing me up a little bit. The Industrials. Okay. We got another sea of green. Worst performer here was Stanley Black & Decker, losing 3.44%. And the best performer, I have a feeling this sector is going to outperform a whole lot in the next upcoming years, mainly because of Trump being in office. Oh my goodness, Axon 40, it's that one, it's that one. Axon 41.65%, I don't even know what this company does. Guys, I have a feeling that this sector is going to skyrocket, skyrocket in the next upcoming years. This is absolutely crazy. 41.65%. And another real estate sector. Worst performer was American Tower, uh, losing 4.48%. And the best performer, it is none other than the company seems to be the one that gained 10%, which is this one, SX Property Trust, gaining 10%. But guys, realty income is down $57, $257.51. So 
yeah, maybe time to pick up a few more around this time. Uh, sub sub 60, you know, yeah, okay, it's not sub 50, but sub 60 so really, really decent. Into now the energy sector. I don't know, this is one that I'm 50-50 on because drill baby drill happens. Oil's going to crash, right? This is going to be so much supply. Oil, oil might crash, but at the same time, people might take a lot more expensive trips, do all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I don't know if this one's going to skyrocket or not. We only had one loser here, and that was APA Corporation losing 5.72%. And the best performer. Oh my goodness, this is just all over. Guys, these numbers are insane right now. Absolutely bonkers. Seems to be none other than this company over here. Targa Resources gaining 16.34%. But I mean, you got, look at this. You got oil, oil and gas midstream is bonkers right now. You got one on a OK, one OK, ticker of OKE, 14.78, Kinder Morgan, 11.17, and Willems Co's, 9.2. Wow. I, I, I am, I am, at Baker Hughes, 13.65. Bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. And now the utility is actually a lot of red here. Wow, it's actually kind of surprising. Worst performer, it is the company. Uh, is it? Yes, it is AES losing 7.55%, but also CEG losing 7.26%. And the best performer, it is none other than the company Vistra gaining 18.73%. percent And lastly, basic materials. We have the worst performer here. <laughs> Salonese, Salonese. 32, losing 32.06%. And the best performer, it is none other than, uh, it seems to be the company Nucor Corp, gaining, actually, sorry, no, guys, sorry, is, is Steel Dynamics, uh, STLD, gaining 11.15%. So, it's only been a week. Actually, it hasn't even been a week yet. It's been less than a week since Trump has won the election, not even president-elect, won the election. Granted, we still have a lot of House seats, and I believe the Senate is almost a foregone con conclusion there but there's still i think like two seats for the republican to take for the republicans to completely sweep everything but we'll see what happens if they do and they're in lockstep in the next two years before the before the the midterms yeah i i foresee a lot i i foresee a lot of good stuff i mean you already got wars ending or like like people are the the world is already becoming like okay he's in office he's president elect okay we're gonna simmer stuff down now so although that's great for the markets less uncertainty less wars uh drill baby drill so we'll see what happens we shall see what happens but guys that pretty much is it for this segment with that said take it away mike so today we're not gonna have the debate guys hope you had a wonderful thank you so today guys we're not gonna actually have the debate uh, we're going to be closing with keep you guys updated on the CPI. You'll have weekly updates on the market as always. Again, who's going to be right? Is Trump going to lead us into basically euphoria? They're going to crash the market. Throw your comments down below. We also have our latest video queued up over here about Powell. So make sure you guys check that one out. And then again, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.